I hope everybody had a, had a Merry Christmas, good Christmas, and now it's back to work, especially for, for our guys. Uh, they reported back on the 23rd, the night of the 23rd, we practiced, and off uh, the 24th, and then we practiced yesterday, and of course now we're getting ready to get ready for Cal State's Bakersfield, a uh, team coached by Rod Barnes, and uh, if anyone knows about Rod's team, they, they mirror him. You know, he's an intense, hard nose, um, just a tough, scrappy kind of player. And I think his team exemplifies that. They're 7-7. Seven seven, uh, play, played a pretty tough schedule. You know, on the road at UCLA, played them really good. Uh, they played a team we played early in the year, Fresno. And uh, it was a close ball game at halftime, and Fresno ended up uh, a lot closer than what the score indicated. Uh, so it's a, it's a team that, uh, again, played Arizona, played them pretty good for about a half, and I think Arizona's size uh, had an effect on the game. So, But it's a team that uh, they got balanced scoring, and uh, they want the game to be in the 60s, the 60s and the low 70s. And, and we prefer it to be uh, in the 80s and 90s and, and on. Uh, so... Uh, Maybe the will of tempos. Who can impose their will in terms of tempo? Defensively, uh, we got to continue to get better. And, uh, and one of the things, like I said, they're a scrappy team, so we got to keep them off the boards. Uh, they they play multiple defenses, so they'll they'll pick you up. You know, their pressure is a little different than ours. It's to kind of slow you down, and uh, whereas ours, we want to speed you up. So it's uh, again, it's a team that we want to come off the break and and hopefully uh, play some good basketball. Continue to play good basketball. All right, if you guys want to raise your hand, we have Mike Diaz. Yeah, Mike, how the uh, post-break post practice has been? Did you guys practice twice on Christmas? And just kind of what, what was Christmas like with the guys? Yeah, we did go twice on Christmas. We got up at 9 and we shot around. We just shot for about 45 minutes, free throws and just some shooting. Then came back and got a pretty good workout. You know, the first one, you know, the first practice coming back was really, uh, it was out of a sync, out of rhythm kind of practice. You could see guys, you know, not can catch the ball, the balance, and uh, but I thought, you know, the first practice on the 23rd was uh, was typical of a break where they go home and they got away, got out a little rhythm. Uh, but I thought the the practice on Christmas Day was a lot better, more physical, and I'm looking forward to even getting a little bit better today, so they can get back in the sink of, you know, uh, playing good basketball. Saturday, any worries about them looking ahead to the conference opener and looking past this one? Uh, this team has been pretty good, Nate, for the most part of uh, uh, staying into uh, into the Nate today. Like today, practice, we want to get better and then uh, uh, staying into the now. So Cal State, Bakersville is a, uh, is a team that, uh, you know, uh, that, that we got to worry about, you know, Tennessee. That's going to come, and, you know, once you get into the conference race. But uh, but the most important game is this game coming up, and uh, that's going to be our job as a coaching staff to make sure emphasize our guys to to stay on task, and hopefully, you know, the senior leadership will be be there for us on that as well. Rankings came out yesterday, Coach. Obviously, again, you guys are unranked. Do you guys take that as a sign of disrespect? Uh, you guys keep up with all the rankings and all that. You know, you know what? I, I know we got a really good basketball team. I, I know we got a team that's getting better, and uh, I want to be in the rankings when it's all said and done. And this is when you, uh, you, you, you're more concentrated on, on, on how your team's playing. And, and when I look at how we're playing, you know, uh, I'm, I get excited about this basketball team because I know there's potential for them getting even better. You know, when you consider we had some guys that weren't playing early on, and, uh, and that is with Cook and Dustin Thomas, and it allowed us to get some other guys in the mix. You know, uh, now Adriel's getting quite a few bit minutes. Uh, even Gabe got more minutes. Uh, and so now we got those guys back. And, of course, we've seen the emergence of Daniel, the impact he has on this team. So uh, that's what I get excited about. So in terms of the ranking, that's what everybody looks at. And it's, it's great for, you know, recruiting and things of that nature. It's, it's there. But at the end of the day, uh, we just want to continue to, to get better and be one of the better teams in the country when it's all said and done. That's, that, that's our goal right there, to get better every day. And uh, can't worry about that. That's just somebody's opinion. Mike, I think, I think Rod, when he played at Ole Miss, I think he faced you guys a couple times in, before you got in the SEC when you played like in Memphis, Pine Bluff, and he faced you like, I'm sure it was 20 plus times as an assistant head coach. Is it going to be odd seeing him in here with a different team other than Ole Miss? And what do you think about the job he's done at Bakersfield? Because they were 
tr transition from D2 to D1. He got him in the NCAA tournament, got him in the IT Final Four. Just what, what he thought about what he's doing and just, just kind of Rod's career at Ole Miss as well. It, it doesn't surprise me. Rod was a point guard and, and played on uh, – Played on an Ole Miss team that won, and and of course he coached over there with Rob Evans for a while, and then he got the head job, and he did a tremendous job there as well. His teams were tough, defensive minded, they were scrappy, and they like I said they mirrored him, and so it doesn't surprise me having an opportunity to go, and I mean just think he went out west, and, and his, his DNA continues to be all over his team because you know they they've gotten better each and every year. You know I think last year they were in the Final Four of the NIT, and they had games on the road where they had to go and win to get to get there. And the year before that they were in NCAA. So uh, he uh, Rob is a very very good basketball coach, and, uh, and I think it's been on display in the SEC, and of course now at Cal State Bakersfield as well. Uh, he's recruited in Mississippi. I think Jarkel, I think I'm saying his name right, is from Oxford actually, and Holmes yeah, from yeah, player of the year in Mississippi. In Mississippi. Yeah, what, what do you think about how he's, you know, the, the, what, what do you think about Jarkel and Holden, and just kind of how he's taking some Southern guys out to the West Coast? Uh, you, you know, I, I think he's recruited to places where he's familiar from, and he's taking them out there, and and I think you you bring those guys and you combine the talent that's out that way, and I think that's why you're seeing uh, his team's a little different than some of those teams. I mean, just hard nose. Uh, you know, that's that's where his recruiting base is. He's from Mississippi, and so it makes sense for him. And you got the player of the year out of Mississippi who's the leading scorer as a freshman. That, that says a lot about you. Um, so, uh, again, uh, Rod, you're going to get kids that mirror who he is. And that's most coaches, that's what they want. They want guys that, you know, that, that, that kind of uh, epitomize what they're about. And uh, so that's why I think you see his teams are always going to be in the hunt for that, the, you know, for the conference championship, even in this year. You know, they got some new guys, but they got a lot of holdovers from last year. But they got a lot of new guys, and he's integrating those guys by playing a tough schedule. So when they get to their conference play, uh, trust me, they uh, in the whack, they're going to be they're going to be in contention. So that's why, you know, when I look at this team, we're getting ready to play. You know, we got to come out and play good basketball. Uh, Coach Broyles, 93, 93rd birthday. What kind of influence does he continue to have on you and this program and school as a whole? Well, first of all, you know, I I came here in 85 with Coach Richardson as a volunteer assistant. And uh, I guess the first thing he did, gave us an opportunity. Uh, gave Coach Richardson an opportunity to be the head coach here. And, and Coach came here and, and did his thing. And uh, so you commend Coach Broyles for that. And, and what he's built here. I mean, when you, when you think about uh, the unique, uniqueness uh, of Razorback, uh, the state, uh, the state university, everybody. I mean, you go from north, south, east, west. It's, it's, it's all about the Razorbacks. And I think he unified uh, unified this program, uh, even to where you know, there's a great passion. I mean, it's like it's religion, uh, the Razorbacks. And, and of course, you got to thank him for that uh, in terms of what uh, what is taking place here? You look at the the facilities here. You know, going from the Southwest Conference, we came when it was still in the Southwest Conference, and transitioned into the SEC. And so, that says that you know he was kind of, he was like years ahead of a lot of other guys, because he got Arkansas into the SEC, and, and I think it's been uh, it's been a big plus for for this university. The, for what's to come in the conference season, and uh, also, do you plan on keeping Daniel in the starting lineup for when that happens? Uh, uh, yeah, as I tell you, I'm not the smartest guy, but I'm not the dumbest guy in the world either. You know, you know, ever since he's been in the lineup, some good things have taken place. Uh, uh, but Daniel's, he's got to continue to work every day and get better, and keep trying to help our help this basketball team. Uh, he he goes now on the top of the scouting list is in a lot of uh, a lot of instances, so it's going to see to me how how he reacts and how our team reacts because you get uh, once you've played in the non-conference schedule which we've have a we've had a very very good schedule and uh, but this team was to me was uh, commanded that where we have a tough schedule to prepare us for you know our league we, we knew our league was going to be good but it's really really good right now and we'll find out even more about our basketball team once we get into conference play which uh, starts Saturday uh, so uh, the schedule it is what it is uh, and we'll find out more about our basketball team. Uh, I think I'm reading this note right, that this is the seventh time, this is the first time since 94 you guys have scored 90 plus points in seven of your first 11 games. 
So just when, when that's obviously a good year to emulate. What, what do you think about that stat? I think our guys are playing the game the right way. I, I think you know, uh, with with six seniors on your basketball team, and you know, you you, you look at the emergence of CJ and Adriel. Jones, uh, you know, how Daniel has, has kind of started figuring out some things. Uh, 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 Darius Hall. So uh, I think the depth of this team is really showing itself uh, defensively and offensively. Uh, we're really starting to share the basketball. I think that puts a lot of pressure on other teams. You know, uh, you know this. You know, last year you think about our team. Last year, it wasn't until we start distributing the scoring that we became a dangerous team. Early on, it was just Dusty. Dusty and, uh, and, uh, and Barford had his, where well, he played well at times. And I had one of those guys come off the bench. And then, of course, you had Darrell Macon, you know. And then, of course, when Moses started scoring effectively, Manuel started scoring, uh, all of a sudden now we start scoring some points and beating people. Uh, well, I think we got more weapons this year. And, uh, but I think these guys are learning how to play together. And, uh, and play, they're playing to win. I think mean, that's the biggest key, playing to win. And so defensively, uh, especially the last four games, I mean, we're taking care of the basketball. Uh, we're creating turnovers. You know, a possession game is going in our favor. So uh, let's knock on wood, continue to, to do what we're doing and, and get better at it. So uh, in terms of scoring, you know, that, that's the object of the game is to score. I mean, we want to score as many points as we want to. As long as we got more uh, on our side as opposed to the opponents. Uh, turn the ball over, have, have turned the ball over more than 200 times this season. How important is the, your guard play tomorrow? It's going to be critical. I think they got good guard play. We have good guard play. And uh, as I said before, we, we've done a good job of taking care of the ball. We value the basketball. But they're a team that's going to be playing multiple defenses, pressing. Uh, you know, they'll throw some junk defenses in there, and we got to continue to to take care of the ball and make good decisions with the basketball. I think that that is very important. His team is built on on defense, and that's what I want our guys to hang our head, head on our defense. So uh, it's going to be a team of uh, who can impose their will on on who, and uh, we want to get the game up 94 feet. We want to get the game up and down the floor. Uh, they prefer, the, like I said, uh, they're not giving up. I think uh, probably 68 points a game, something like that. Uh, while scoring maybe 69. So, uh, again, that's, that's going to be the difference in the game. We've got to make shots, but also our defense has got to be on point. All right, thank you, guys.